This is my bird garden. You see what's up there? It's a tree squirrel. He's come to the fountain to get a drink. He's going to leave as soon as I walked up. Yep, he's gone. He left. Hi, everybody. It's Robbie from Southern California, and I'm going to do a Q&A today in my bird garden. I'm going to let you enjoy the bird garden as I go over just a few questions on composting in place and soil. You'll probably see some hummingbirds coming over to the hummingbird lunch plant. And there won't be as many birds today coming in at this hour because we're kind of midday and it's very hot. As you all know, we're all in warm weather right now. And the birds generally feed very early in the morning. And then they'll come back periodically for little bits here and there. And then later on, what they'll do in the evening is they'll come in in huge numbers to feed. But I thought you would enjoy this as well as you can listen to this and hopefully get something out of it. And if not, well then you know, which is really good. I'm gonna start off with a question by Baby Steps on my newest video that was on the two system, 33 gallon compost in place tote. She had a one gallon bin and she was building it up. I'm not gonna get into it because it's very, very long. And then she filled a 10 gall gallon flower pot. It sounds like she made a two system setup. And when she went in there, as she said in her, her question to me, one day I had some scraps to add. I opened it up. She has this, oh no, face, and found maggots or grubs. They were very happy in the home she had built for them. I researched and found they were probably maggots. I read that they would kill my plants. Well, let me tell you something. Maggots do not eat plants. Maggots are doing the same thing that earthworms do. And she went ahead and she tore the whole thing apart and got rid of them. The reason you don't use maggots in composting, and if they get in there, I don't worry at all about it, is because their life cycle is so short. I mean, they totally live for, what, about 30 days. And as a maggot, shorter than that, literally less than a week. Maggots do a wonderful job on taking your compost and breaking it down. They do a fabulous job. They're doing really just as good as earthworms. But again, they don't last like earthworms. When you put earthworms in there, which keep in mind are not native to parts of California. They were introduced here and they're happy here. Earthworms can live for years and years. They produce more babies. You have more and you can build up an entire farm of earthworms. With maggots, that's a stage. It goes from an egg to a maggot to a cocoon or a grub and then boom, they're back out flying. And then of course, birds are coming around eating them as they're doing their own thing. They're part of mother nature. They're breaking down your compost and that's okay. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Now, maggots tend to look, especially the soldier fly magnet, ma uh, maggots. Maggots tend to look for damper areas. So if your compost bin is really wet, like you're watering it and it's not draining really good, let's say it gets a little mucky, that's what they love. And that's what they live in. And it's okay, but you can get rid of them without tearing the entire thing apart. You can simply add in some native soil, some paper, any type of carbon, something drier, and that tends to stop the flies from coming in and laying there, they're looking for something wetter. I want you to notice right now in the bowl that that is two spice finches just came in to eat. And then around there are house finches, but the two in the bowl straight in front of you are spice finches. That's probably a pair. So it is a good thing. Don't worry about it. If you don't want it, of course, you can take them out and dump them somewhere and the birds will probably come and get them, but don't worry about them eating or killing your plants. They're not going to do that. So let's get that right out. I don't know who wrote that? It's kind of like the old thing Gary reminded me of. They used to say sweet potato leaves are toxic because somebody put that on and it came up on the internet and it's not true. This is not true. Maggots will not hurt your plants. But what can hurt your plants is if it's not draining good and it's becoming too wet, tomatoes don't like to be real wet. Now, if your bucket's real wet, but where the tomatoes are growing, let's say you've got a setup like the one I did, the two system where you've got a tote and then a bucket in there. But the area where the tomatoes are growing, if it's not too wet, you're going to be perfectly fine. You won't have a problem. But if it's too wet, that's what will hurt your plants, not the maggots. So maggots are fine. 
I've even seen that on Gardening Australia once. They opened up a bin. It was full of all these different types of magnets. And Costa said, this is a good thing. Add in some dry stuff and they'll go away. You don't have to worry about it. Now, another question or a comment I wanted to go through, which was really, really good. And I, you're going to have to forgive me because I don't know how to pronounce your name. And I believe you're from Greece. I, um, I'm going to say APEC, even though it is not. She wanted me to know, I'm supposing it's a she. Yes, she wanted me to know that she's been doing and following me on YouTube and setting up and she has no earthworms at all. And that even though she has no er earthworms, she doesn't want anybody to worry that all that matter that she's piling and doing, the same thing we're all doing with maybe a few earthworms or not, is still breaking down into beautiful soil. She said in three months she had beautiful soil and her zucchinis and everything are doing fabulous with it. That's because the microbes are breaking it down and that is wonderful. When there's no earthworms and you've got microbes and they're going to be everywhere, they're going to just come because Mother Nature sends them there, that is what is absolutely fabulous for your compost. I don't know if you can see it, but the spice finches went over to the larger fountain and they're taking a bath now. Oh gosh, this is so cute. You don't have to have earthworms to have all this matter turn back in the soil. Anything that was once alive wants to return to the earth. This is the way our world is set up. I know a lot of times I don't put enough compost or mulch on top of my plants. I do that later. I come back. I could crush leaves or, or cr I even crush weeds. And if they start to grow, I just pull them out and they become part of the top mulch. Our earth normally, our soil is normally not bare. It's always got something on top to cover it to help retain water. And if you use a leaf matter, that's even better yet because it quickly breaks down as you water and it becomes like a compost tea for your plants. So covering them is important. If you're watering and you don't cover it, let me tell you something, I don't cover a lot of mine because I just simply forget or I'm onto another part of the garden. It still will work as long as you don't let them completely dry out. So that's something I wanted to talk about. As far as catching the water in my new system, you can put that tube straight into a bucket. You can have a bucket there with a lid, make a hole for your tubing, and you could go straight into that. And you could save it that way. You could use it straight or mix in extra water and then pass it around your garden. Either way will work. Betsy B. Keto wants to know how do you start Moringa seeds because she wants to start them indoors. Moringas are really easy to start. They will grow, but what they don't like to have happen when they're young, the seedlings, they don't seem to like to be transplanted a lot of times. And a lot of you have told me you went to transplant them and then they die. I have found the best way for me is in a paper cup method. And then when they start growing and they're nice little plants, go ahead and pop the bottom of the paper cup out and then put them wherever you want to plant them. Leave them in the paper cup because believe you me, they're going to tear through. But this way when you water the paper cup, you're watering directly to the roots and to the plant itself. It's going to, of course, come through the bottom because you're going to pop the bottom out and it's going to grow right where you want it. It's going to be perfect. And it also prevents roly polies or cutworms or something getting in there into the young tender plants when you plant them outside and hurting the trunk of the plant. So it's really good. Try the paper cut method. Hi, this is for Diane Perez. My zucchini plants don't look like yours. My leaves are small and turning yellow. I have drainage and I have water. Can bugs cause yellow leaves? Can aphids cause this? Generally, no. Now, this doesn't really give me a lot to go on. So hopefully this will help a lot of you. I don't know your setup. If you've set it up exactly the way I did, in other words, with leaf matter and all that, then it should grow. But you could have ended up with some of that bagged soil that wasn't good. What was wrong with a lot of this soil was it wasn't broken down right or enough and the plants won't grow in it. 
because it's pulling the nitrogen because it's still trying to break down and there's no leaf matter in all that. It's just broken down wood. Who knows what they put in these bag soils. So you may have to get a better soil. And what I would do is if you were, if you can, and your zucchini plant is small, you can lift it out, get a good soil, make a hole in your tote container bucket, wherever you've got it or in the ground, put some good soil in there and then replant it back. You may be able to save it that way. If you can't do that and it's too big, dig around it and put some good soil around it and see if that helps it. Because there's something that's pulling what the plant needs. It sounds like the soil isn't broke down enough. Now, when I set up my totes, I always put something fairly good on the top, whether it's a bagged soil I bought or soil from another tote that's already broke down. The yellowing leaves is most likely like I said, it's hard to see because I don't know what your weather is. I don't know how you set it up. I don't know where you're living. I don't know what your you know, temperature is. But definitely there's something missing. So it needs more compost. It needs food matter. Zucchini is one of your heaviest feeders in the garden. They grow very quickly, the plant. They produce very quickly as well. And they feed on that. And if you have a small container and you've loaded it with leaves and kitchen scraps and all that, they'll pull from that right away. And as they get bigger, it's like you're out of food. It's out of food. So it's struggling and that's when it will go yellow. I would definitely remove a lot of those yellow leaves off. Try to feed the plant either with a compost tea and see if it will come back. I have taken some zucchini plants, squash plants, removed almost all the leaves. You have to leave one or two because it needs to have some green leaves on it to produce and to grow and then it will just burst back into life and start growing uh, new growth. So something is causing it not to grow. And I don't know if it's really the heat because mine, during the day, they all droop. They look like, oh my gosh, what is happening to the plants? The leaves are all droopy. But the thing is, they're actually doing quite well because in the evening, as the sun drops, all the leaves go perk back up. You know, they're all up again and the plant is happy. That's why I like picking my fruit off my plants in the morning when it still has all that water retained because when you pull a lot of the fruit off later on in the day it could be a little bit on the drier side it doesn't really matter but that's just my preference I do not believe those are insects causing it now if you've got squash bugs in your area that could be an issue we here in Southern California do not have any type of squash bugs I've got a whole video on what I would do if I had it which means I would have to net it in with tool. I'd have to start it with fresh, good soil and good kitchen scraps and keep that covered so no squash bugs can get in there. Plus, you don't want to bring soil in there that may have eggs from some of the squash bugs. It would have to be pure and you will have to hand pollinate. You'll have to hand pollinate male flowers and females. You could carefully uncover it even if you got flowers from another plant. It doesn't have to be the same exact zucchini plant hand pollinate it and cover it back. So that's the thing. It's sometimes hard to answer questions because I don't know the history of what else is going on. So I'm doing the best I can here. Let me uh, also go over this. A few of you have said that, oh, you've gone live and I didn't know. Now I get notifications on my phone from a few of the people I watch, but the point is there's a few th steps you have to go through. You have to make sure that you're subscribed. This is the way YouTube is set up and you go to the channel page. So I will have a home page where it will show a banner across the top and it will say that you're subscribed or not subscribed. So you would have to subscribe. Then there's a bell there. You hit the bell, but try to click on it. So it will open up and ask you how you want to set it up and you want to get notifications. So you set it up to be notified on whatever, let's say I would do, whether I'm going live or I'm putting a new video up. So you hit that. Now that is fine, but there's one other thing. If you're watching from your phone or an iPad, if you have the notification setting on your phone shut off on YouTube, you won't get notified on your phone. So you have to keep that in mind. So when you go on and you turn on your phone and you go to YouTube, you'll get a notification then. We'll say, oh, Robbie and Gary, Gardening Easy, we're live because they couldn't notify you, but they notified you the moment you turned on your phone. So what you would have to do is go into the settings of your phone, 
find your apps, go to the YouTube app, click on that, and there will be a button there asking you whether you want to be notified or not notified. That's all you have to do. And then you hit that button to be notified, and then every time you have your phone with you, you'll hear, you'll get a ding if I go live. I'm never going to know when I'm going to go live. I might be in the garden and a herd of deer might come down. At that point, I may go live. I never know what I'm doing during the day, even today doing a QA. and I wasn't planning on it, but I was sitting here for a few moments taking a break because I'm working on a lot of stuff in the garden right now. And I started some seeds that I got to get planted. And I thought I would sit down and go over a couple cute, you know, questions right now that were coming in, just a couple. And so I just never know when I'm going to do anything. So I am going to try to go live more often. I'm going to try, and there might be times that I may only go on membership, like maybe I'm going to bore you to death <laughs> as I put on a pocket on a shirt, but I can chit-chat with a few of you that way. And then there'll be times, of course, that we go on live for everybody, which is mostly, and it could be Gary and I, it could be me. Half the time, Gary doesn't even know I'm going to go live. When we did the blood moon that night, he was sitting in the garden with my uh, phone, and I said to Gary, do you want to go live? He was so tired. He had worked all day, all over. And he said, no. I said, ding, we're live. <laughs> so I went live. He didn't even know I was going live. So nobody knew I was going live. My granddaughter said, how did you sit there for almost two hours with your phone being held up by, by your arm for two hours? I said, I don't know. If I would have thought about it, I would have got a tripod. So I don't know when I'm going to go live. So it'll be a surprise to you as much as it's a surprise to me and half the time to Gary, too. So that's basically it for today. It's just so, it's so quiet. There's no leaf blowers. There's no nothing. All you hear is the water from the fountains that are going, which I have to get some more going. Got a couple of them that are in the shade, and they kind of alternate because they're underneath the trees here. I did find a fig out there, which was really nice, so I found it before the birds. I didn't tool any of it. Normally, I take a section and I tool it, and by putting tool, the birds cannot get to it. I did lose some of the figs once because I tooled it and forgot to go back. They didn't get it, neither did I, and they dried up. But tool really, really works to keep the birds off, and it keeps the squirrels off, too because squirrels don't like it. Generally, you're always going to find, you know, somebody that's going to figure it out. But in general, 99.9% .9 of the time, the tool works perfect. And I just love my tool. You saw how I covered the drain holes. You could do that in your regular totes as well. If you're making holes, you can make really big holes and you don't want all your soil and everything to fall out. Bunch up some old tool, put it by the hole inside the tote and cover it up. Then you won't have your holes getting blocked if you have small holes. So I hope you enjoyed this. We'll see how this goes. But this is something you can listen to. There's nothing, like I said, there was nothing to see. YouTube has kind of prompted me to do podcasts. And I don't mind doing podcasts, which would be just sitting here and just talking. But they do want some sort of visual. And I thought, you know what? If I can figure out the right time on maybe the hummingbirds when they come in, because they're kind of changing around, or the birds in the garden, because it changes day to day. You know, that would be a good time to just come out here and do a little podcast, something you can just listen to or have it nice and quiet until all the noise in the city starts up. This is terrible. Now I want to go do things and all I want to do is sit and see what's coming in because I keep looking. You never know what's going to come in. I have sat here and saw some of the most unusual birds come in. But like I said, right now it is very warm. And so they're coming in mainly for a quick drink, a quick snack, and then they're taking off. So I think that's it. Let me look real quick, see if there's any other questions that I might be able to answer. I'm not picking and choosing anybody by your name or anything. I'm just kind of thinking of something I can quickly answer. Most of them are statements. Oh, um, more and Kel, I don't understand this system. Why do you have a large toad at all? And what is the benefit of the small green tote on top of the red tote? Which he's talking about the green bucket and the red bucket on the two system compost I did. Here's the thing. This could be a setup for somebody that has a very small garden. So now they can grow in the very large 33 gallon tote. 
they can grow whatever they want. They can grow lettuce, they can grow tomato plant, they can grow zucchini in there. Then with the buckets, the red bucket underneath, as I already explained in there, is your compost bucket. That's where you're not gonna throw away your kitchen scraps. Here in California, they made it illegal to throw away kitchen scraps. I have never thrown away kitchen scraps, so it doesn't matter. Those kitchen scraps are valuable. They're your plant food, they're your soil. It's gonna save you money and you know what's going into it. It's not a bunch of weird stuff. I got a, recently a few bags of potting soil I bought and I don't know what was in there. They tell you forest matter, but I found this pieces of bright green something. It looked like plastic. And then Gary and I looked at it and said, could it be a type of plant food? I hope not, but it wasn't because in another bag, same brand, I found a big piece that was the, the size of a jar cap and it was not plant food. So they had grinded up plastic in there. You never know what's in there when you're doing, and I don't even know where the plastic came from. When you're doing your own soil, you know exactly what's going in there. So the red tote, as Morin called it, that was your compost bucket. The green bucket on the top, that's to prevent anything from getting in there. And if it fits fairly snug, you won't get your maggots in there. Some people are worried about maggots. Just whatever you put in there, you will get your microbes. It can still breathe because soil has to have oxygen in it too. And so you'll be able to compost with your microbes and you will be able to grow in the green bucket as well. You can grow something small in there. I wouldn't grow a tomato plant that's going to get five feet tall because how are you going to lift it out without breaking it? You could do a small tomato plant, but you want to lift that bucket out, dump in your kitchen scraps and then put the bucket back. In there you could do parsley. You could do mint, but it gets such a big root that it might try to get to the bottom of the compost. And if it does, it does, but you could do that. You could do flowers. You could put anything you want, some brassicas on the top, keep them small. When you could do, like I said, put a bunch of pots on the top, small pots, and you could do cuttings. You can start seeds in small cups on top. Why? I'm gonna to have to tell you, I don't know. But I have found that when I take flower pots and sit them on top of a new compost, tote you know tote that i've set up cuttings take off and grow so the microbes even though you can't see them are traveling around and they're actually getting somehow into the plastic or paper cups because they're going to have drainage and they're creating something good in there for them to grow because they just grow like mad and then of course the reason i had the tube was i'm collecting what's going through because as the microbes are breaking everything down the water coming out of there is valuable. It's not valuable just because it's water and we're gonna save on water. It's such a small amount when you think about it. What, a gallon or two, whatever, it depends on how much you're watering. It's the plant food. Plant food is expensive. And I know a couple of you told me recently you bought some plant food that was like uh, this or balls and you put them in your totes and all your earthworms died. What probably happened with that was I don't know what the plant food was made of, but if the earthworms don't like something you put in there, they, they tend to leave. At night, they will leave. They will just take off and disappear, whether they go through the holes of your container or go through the top. If they don't like what you put in there, they will not stay. So keep that in mind. See, that's why you wouldn't want to pour vinegar in there because that might make them go. So you kind of got the idea. And so something in the plant food you bought and tried was not something they wanted to see. I don't know if you can see on the bottom, but there's a spotted toey right now. They are absolutely gorgeous. I'm hoping you can see it. It's right on the ground to the left. They, they were here years ago. I mean, they've been here, of course, since I've been here, but the thing was, you never saw them. It was such a rarity to see them. They would come out and if they heard you, just like I'm sitting here talking, I'm about eight feet from it. If they heard me, they would leave. Now that they know the garden, they're acclimated to the food that's being put out, the food that they can find, they don't care. I can be out in the garden and they're hopping around. They're funny birds. All right, so let's see how this goes. See if you enjoy this. If you enjoy this, I'll try to do some more Q and A's like this where I just let you enjoy the garden with me. Maybe I'll do it earlier in the morning when there's more birds out. 
And I hope you do enjoy the two system because I'm going to tell you that's one of my most favorite setups because you're getting so much out of it. You're making compost that you could go into the red bucket, take that out and put it in a new flower pot or something you want to grow. Start, want to start a new zucchini plant, go in there, take some of that out, move it over. You've got the compost tea and you've got the whole setup where you can grow in it. So it's kind of like an all-in-one setup. Plus, you've got the benefits of making extra for other plants you've already planted already. The ideal thing would have every would be to have every tote on the property set up that way, but I don't need it because I won't have enough kitchen scraps. So I am going back to work. I've got to go get some of my seeds planted that I started, very similar to the plastic bag method, and I want to get them out because they've started. I know the seeds are viable and good. And I want to get them space where I want them. So with that. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. I also have to go make some new water fountains. I've got to change some of these out quick.